Hello. In our last lesson, we just kind of gave you an idea of TIA portal view and how to get online to communicate with the PLC. Now we are going to give you an opportunity to create your first project in the Siemens TIA portal software. Uh, as I've said before, that you can open existing projects, but here's where we create new ones. We go under the Start uh, tab and create new project. So create new project. It's going to change what the window looks like here in a second. It's going to ask me for a name. So I will give it a name. My first project. It's going to ask me where I want to save it. I can give a, put me as the author. If I want to change the location or where I want to save it, I can click on right here, these three little dots, and that will allow me to save it somewhere else on my computer, as you can see. But I'm going to keep, and that's a fairly typical Windows uh, file tree. I'm going to cancel, and I'll put a comment. This is to demonstrate, if I can spell, show you how to create a project. So I hit create, and now you should see over on this side here, all of these tabs or will light up and become active. Okay? Waiting, waiting, waiting. This is in real time, so it takes a few minutes to create the project. And as you can see, this is giving you a tree to walk through. Um, devices, networks, PLC programming, motion technology, visualization. Um, this is the steps that you would take to create a program. You know, when it, this is set up your hardware, this is write your software. If you want to put in like a PID or a pulse with modulation to control some, something like that, that's your technology objects. And of course, in visualization. This will step by step go through to everything. Um, so I will create, let's click on devices and network. And this will show, I can go to show all devices, add new device. Um, let me add new device. And at this point, this screen will show up. And it's going to give me all the op possible options for controllers. Um, device proxy or somatic S7 uh, 1200 series. You can see that right here. I can toggle between HMIs or controllers. I can add all my hardware here. Good rule of thumb is add your hardware first before you program. Um, so let me open that seven. Here's my CPU. And it gives me a list of all these CPUs. As I mentioned earlier, you can see AC, DC, relay, DC, DC, DC. Um, for the most part, everything is there on this controller. Well, I know from before, I have a 1214C DC, DC, DC. So let me click on that. But that gives me a couple different options on what's there. Well, let me help you see here. So if I go back to my PowerPoint right here, you can see this is a 2014X. Uh, OLL, A, 1AG, you can see that number right here. And if you look, AG40, you can see that this is that controller type right there. And it'll give you a breakdown. There's a couple different versions. Yeah, I would just click the one that's there and we'll go from there. I'll hit add. So now it's going to give me a, a look with the new, with the PLC there. I will show you an easier way in a second, but let me do the hard way first. So it is open a visual representation in project view of your processor. Okay, so here is my processor. Here is everything. This is my hardware. 
So it took me out of portal view and put me back into project it put me into project view. I can toggle back by going down down here. So right if you look down here, down below here, um, let me draw it to be sure. If you look right there, you'll see the toggle between project view and 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 um, and portal view. And the nice thing about this is if I click on anything, it's going to bring me up a menu or double click on anything. It should bring me up a menu of properties. And here's where I can do, you know, do my adjustments and change things. We'll get to that later. I just wanted to show you how to bring in your hardware. Um, on the side here, so let me show you on the side here, there's a catalog of a bunch of hardware. Okay. This is where I then go through and add what I need to add based upon what I have on my on my rack. So if I pull up my PowerPoint, you can see right here I have an SM1234 uh, uh, 30, uh, and an SM1223. So let me do the AIQ first. Um, here's my AIQ. Now it's giving me this as a catalog on the side. In this case, with a lot of hardware, whoops, in a lot of hardware, all this stuff is written on the side in between the, the cards. I just happen to know that it's this one here. I, and then what I can do is drag it into what slot this is. I can do the same thing with my DIDQ. So in this case, I know that there it's a DI8 setup, bring in the bottom one here, 23. And look, there it is. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. And here's one cool thing about TIA Portal. It's automatically bringing in and matching up your addresses visually. So if you're more of a visual learner, you can compare to the PLC, so let me uh, take a look. So here's my outputs here. See how that look, see how that looks there? It was dot zero dot one. Well, look at me compare. Let me compare right here. Look, it has my addresses right there, so I can visually see where everything is. Same way with my analog inputs and outputs. Visually, I W. There's my inputs and outputs. Um, same is true with my card. It's a nice little feature. Um, there's one more thing I have to add. Remember in my hardware section, you have to add a signal board here. Well, I can go into my signal boards. Um, a, Q, here's my one bit Q, and I can just drag that in right there and look, now there's that. So there's my hardware, okay? Um, pretty nice feature. Let me zoom out. If I want to check out the properties of any of this, all I have to do is double click on the piece of hardware and it will open up, open up the properties menu below. So if you want to look at your properties here, this is where you get your catalog information, properties. If you look down below, I'm going to open this up a little bit so you can see it better. Um, you can get maintenance issues, but this is where you would go to get a bunch of your information. Now, one thing I have to make note of right here, before you start programming, we've all, last session we went out, went online with a processor out there that had a, stat, a, a already established IP address. If I click on, and this is a, if I click on my properties and click on the little ethernet port right there, it's going to automatically take me to my communications page for this processor. But look at what it does right away. It gives you a default, an adult, a default IP address that doesn't match your processor out there. So if you were to download this to the processor, you'll lose communication right away because there's going to be an IP mismatch. Uh, IP address mismatch. So I can do this set uh, IP address set directly directly at device and go through and do my networking if I need to add a subnet, 
I can also do time synchronization, et cetera, et cetera. A couple other things when you're setting up the hardware I want to encourage you to do. It's at, let me click back on the main processor. It's here. Remember when I said in the last um, presentation that the inputs output addresses can be customized. Well, if I'm if I'm here, and let me spotlight, if I'm here on the side here of this properties tab and look for my inputs and outputs under digital inputs, digital outputs, and I.O. addresses, if I click on I.O. addresses, look at this. I can change my values to whatever I want. So I use the example of 105, hit enter, and look, that's tweaked to 106. If I want to keep this at zero, I can. So this allows you to to add I.O. without having to go crazy with uh, um, trying to mismatch and other things like that. Um, a couple other things I want to point out. I can do this with my inputs as well, my uh, analog inputs and my signal board. You can create high-speed counters um, with this processor or pulse with generators. But we're not going to go into that, but I can give startup um, things to do if, if, if start, for startup conditions. Also, I can do cycle monitoring time. Um, so another thing that you can establish right away, and I would encourage you to do this first, is system and clock memory. So if you look, go down this general tab, system and clock memory, you can enable system bits. So first scan, uh, diagnostic update, always true, always false bits and clock bits that will blink at certain intervals, so it really makes blinking lights easier, but you should enable these first, okay? This is everything that you can do here. Um, you can set up your tags, too, with all your hardware that's here, and just go in, and, and we'll talk about tags later. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that you can do once you add your hardware, okay? But this can be tedious and time consuming going in and give me and what if you have a hardware mismatch well let me show you i'm going to delete all this and i want to show you the easier way to add hardware okay i'm gonna go back to portal view and what i can do is go all the way down to here so here i am and i'm add new device set up um, I'm in controller and I am in uh, down here so, um, so you can see here's my you, know, you can see my spotlight hopefully so here I am and way down here unspecified CPU you can see that right there unspecified CPU I can click, and you'll see just some uh, random string of numbers that because you don't know which one of these it is. So I can double click on that, and here's what the nice thing is. Look and see what this says right here. It says, uh, please use hardware catalog to specify the CPU or detect the configuration of the device. I'm going to detect because this thing is smarter than me and I'm lazy and don't want to disconnect things. So I can hit detect and it will bring up the communication pathway window that we showed you last time. So I start search and I'll search, search for the PLC that I want to communicate with. And it's going to look and look and look and look. And look, there's my PLC. I can flash my LED to make sure, um, but that's the only PLC that's on the uh, on my network right now. So I'm going to hit detect. And guess what it will do? Let's see if it how good how good it was. Hey, check that out. Does that look familiar? Like we just created it. Yes, it does. It has all the hardware. It has all the I/O. Um, now, even though I detected the settings, it will bring in every. I still may need to double check the uh, communications. So I just double checked on the Ethernet port. 
click on it, and there's my Ethernet address. Um, if I double click on any of my in, on that processor, I may want to change my I/O just because. Uh, so I/O addresses, but it's there. Um, I still may need to enable my system bits and clock bits um, just in case. But look at that; it's there. So once I have all this, and this is my hardware, what I would recommend you do is some pro uh, some programming languages will automatically compile before they download. Others will not. Mitsubishi, for one, you need to compile first and download. Siemens is like that, where I have to compile first before I download. And there's a couple ways of compiling. I can right-click on the PLC itself to open a menu. And you can see, whoops. You can see right here where it says compile, hardware changes, software changes, rebuild all. Anytime you make a change in the hard on this on the screen, you should apply your changes, compile, and download. I'm going to rebuild all my hardware, and it says, okay, everything. You know, um, there's a warning. Basically, it wants me to put a security level on there because it's thinking we're in industry, but I'm at a school, so um, I'm good to go. And if I want to download, I just right click and I can go download to device, hardware configuration. And it's going to look for the PLC, it's asking about the detection, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm good. If I click load, it will download this hardware configuration back to the PLC. And if I want to start all, I can. So there we go. Um, we have our hardware all set. So we have set our hardware, and we have started our first project. If I hit Save Project, it will save this project. Um, but this is how you create a project and add your hardware in said project. And now if I go back to Portal View, I can start programming if I want to. But we're just going to talk about devices and networks. Here, here's my two PLC devices. Station one here, my computer, my PLC. If I double click on it, it'll take me right here. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.